The Generation 3 Pokemon games are unique in that they feel like a reboot of the series. But if you go back and start the game from scratch today, can you still catch them all? Unlike its predecessor, Generation 2, you are unable to transfer any Pokemon from the previous generations. When it comes to transferring Pokemon from generation to generation, Generation 3 is really the starting point. You don't get any help from any of the prior generations, all you get is what Generation 3 has to offer. There are no more events, no more new content coming to Generation 3, so if you started the game from scratch today, is it possible to complete the National Decks? Well, this video is intended to be the definitive guide to complete the National Decks in the Generation 3 games in the modern day. Before I continue, let me set the rules for this challenge. There will be no cheating devices of any kind, no Game Shark, no Action Replay. That should be fairly obvious. There will be no glitches like the Palm Egg Berry glitch, however I will break this rule only once in Pokemon Coliseum to use the Infinite Master Ball glitch since it's so easy and so well known and it's just for saving time. I will only be using legitimate hardware. I can only use items that Nintendo would approve of if they walked right in right now. This means no distribution cartridges that were supposed to be returned to Nintendo, no ROMs of distribution cartridges, no injecting save files, nothing like that. I will only be playing the game the way Nintendo intended. And finally, completing the Pokedex means every single Pokemon, including all the mythicals. Now, I've selected Pokemon Ruby version. I think it should be fairly obvious that I'm going to need more than one Pokemon game to complete the national deck, but this is just the starting point that I chose. Pokemon Ruby version will offer most of the Generation 3 Pokemon that I need. There are a handful that I will need Sapphire or Emerald for, like Lotad, Saviper, Lunatone, Sableye, Latias, and Kyogre. The e-reader with the Eon ticket is an option to get the other Eon Pokemon, but I still need to get Groudon or Kyogre anyway, and so you may be thinking, okay, I'll just get Pokemon Emerald version. However, Emerald is missing the Surskute line, the Metatite line, Roselia, Zangoose, and Lunatone. So basically, you're going to need at least two of the Hoenn games, and to be honest, I'd recommend Ruby and Sapphire. Actually, you don't really need Emerald at all. Now, if you already have Ruby and Sapphire version, or you're about to go buy them, stop right there, you're not quite out of the woods yet. The language and where the game is from is actually very important. Either your Ruby or Sapphire version is going to have to be in English and from North America, and you can tell if it's from North America if it has the ESRB logo on it instead of Peggy or some other rating system. The other Hoenn game I would recommend should be the Japanese version, however we also need Fire Red and Leaf Green, so either of those could be the Japanese version as well, but I'm going to recommend Ruby or Sapphire just because they're easier to beat. As long as you have either Ruby or Sapphire in North American English version and any of your other GBA games in the Japanese version, all the rest of the GBA Pokemon games that you use can be in whichever language you prefer, and I will explain why in just a bit. Anyway, between Ruby and Sapphire version and a bit of trading, you should be able to get all of the Hoenn Pokemon except for the Mythicals. Next, you're going to need Fire Red and Leaf Green version. You only actually need to beat one of them, and the other one you'll only use to fill in the version exclusives and the starters. Of course, besides the legendary birds, the really important legendary between these two games is Mewtwo. After getting through these games, you should be able to fill out most of the Gen 1 Pokedex except for Mew. Before I move on, I want to point out a few Pokemon that are a little bit harder to find and you could miss. Feebas can be found on Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, but it only has a chance to appear on 6 specific water tiles on Route 119. There's no way around this, this might end up being the most annoying Pokemon to try to find. I recommend using the Super Rod a few times on each tile until you find it, since the only other Pokemon that will be able to appear is a Carvana, and that may help you avoid getting confused. It's also important to note that the only Generation 3 Pokemon game where Slowpoke is available is actually the Leaf Green version, which is actually kind of important to point out because all the rest of the version exclusive Pokemon can be found in other games. So we've cleared all the Generation 1 Pokemon and all the Generation 3 Pokemon except for the Mythicals. Generation 2 gets a little more tricky. It's true that most of the Generation 2 Pokemon are available in Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald, but not all of them. This is why you're going to need a GameCube, or possibly two GameCubes. You're going to need Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD. 
Pokemon XD can be in whichever language you prefer, however Pokemon Coliseum, unfortunately you're going to need to get the Japanese version, and I promise I will explain why in just a moment. Pokemon Coliseum is going to give you access to almost all of the Generation 2 Pokemon that you need. It gives you a much easier path to catching Suicune, Entei, and Raikou, and it's also your only legitimate path to Ho-Oh. In case you didn't know, to get Ho-Oh you have to complete Mount Battle, but not the one in the story mode. You have to register your Pokemon from the story mode and complete Mount Battle in Battle Mode after you've captured all the shadow Pokemon and purified them. I completely forgot that it needed to be in the battle mode and I ended up basically having to beat Mount Battle twice, so don't do that unless you're trying to get the Poke Dollars to get a King's Rock or something like that, which you may need if you're trying to evolve certain Pokemon that you need for the Pokedex. Every time you beat a trainer without any of your Pokemon fainting, you earn a continue. Save up these continues as much as you can because later on there are some trainers that are pretty tough and some of them even have legendary Pokemon. If you do lose, it's fine. As long as you have a continue, you can keep going and you can still get ho -Oh. Also, just make sure you have some Pokemon that can handle Shedinja's Wonder Guard because there are quite a few of them along the way. Pokemon XD is a little bit less useful, you really only need it to get Lugia, however it can help you fill in a few Pokedex slots that you may not have gotten around to yet or some Pokemon that you just haven't evolved yet, like Salamence or Dragonite for example, and it also has some version exclusives that could help you out. So if you go through all those games, you should now have all the Generation 2 Pokemon, including the Legendaries, except for Celebi. So if you followed everything up to this point, we are missing Mew, Celebi, Jirachi, and Deoxys, of course, all the mythicals. Some people may stop here, but we can actually keep going. But before I do that, let me finally explain something. There are actually three different types of game cubes across the world, NTSCU in North America, NTSCJ in Japan and parts of Asia, and then PAL in Europe and other parts of the world. Pokemon Coliseum was released on all three of these, however when connecting to the Game Boy Advance games it's only going to be compatible if the regions match. For example, my English copy of Pokemon Ruby from North America is not compatible with the Japanese version of Pokemon Coliseum. It's only compatible with the English NTSCU version of Pokemon Coliseum. Same goes for Pokemon XD and any other GameCube game. However, all the GBA Pokemon games, regardless of language or region, can trade amongst each other. So with that in mind, we need to utilize the NTSCU Pokemon Coliseum bonus disc and the NTSCJ bonus disc. For Jirachi, you don't need to play Coliseum at all, you don't even need the game. You just need this bonus disc and Ruby and Sapphire version and you can download a Jirachi onto your game. The Japanese bonus disc is a little more demanding. You need to catch all 48 Shadow Pokemon and purify them, which you're going to have to do anyway if you want to catch Ho-Oh. Then with an empty slot in your party on Pokemon Coliseum, you can receive a Celebi on that save file. You can also receive one on your Japanese Game Boy Advance game if you beat the Elite Four. Either way, you're going to need a Japanese Game Boy Advance game to trade the Celebi over to the game you're trying to complete the Pokedex on. This is why I recommend you get Ho-Oh on the Japanese version, since by the time you get Celebi, all that's left is to beat Mount Battle. That way, you don't have to play through Coliseum twice unless you really want to. As far as Mew and Deoxys go, you're in a bit of a tough spot. There is pretty much no legitimate way to get them today. The only thing you could do now is trade with somebody who got the event, but even then, after so long, how can you verify that they didn't cheat to get those events? You could definitely break the rules I set at the beginning and get Mew and Deoxys, no problem. But if you're playing the squeaky clean Nintendo approved way, I'm afraid the train stops here. It's unfortunate that you can't complete the entire national decks, but the fact that you can get 384 out of 386 Pokemon today is pretty impressive. To finish this up really quick, I wanted to show a list of all the items that I needed to almost complete the Pokedex, so if you want to try, you can too. And just for fun, currently on the secondary market, all this will currently cost you a grand total of 1,096 US dollars although these items will regularly sell for wildly different amounts of money. Also, this is just the way I did it. Redditor Bob Squab pointed out that you can actually pull this off with as little as four games, Pokemon Emerald, Leaf Green, Coliseum, and XD. However, you still need the bonus discs if you want Jirachi and Celebi, and by playing with only two GBA games, you're going to have to restart and trade a lot, so while this might be the most affordable way, I don't recommend it. 
It's just nice to have the extra games and the extra wiggle room, if you can. However, I just bring this up to point out that there is more than one way to do this. Now, that's a lot, and I don't expect that everyone is going to attempt to do this, but if you are thinking about trying to complete the Pokedex on Gen 3, or at least go as far as you possibly can, I do have some tips. You might have noticed that you need a few different games from at least two different languages, and that can be intimidating if you aren't a native speaker in one or both of those languages. I'm an English speaker myself, I don't know if you could tell. Thankfully, you should still be able to get through these games in Japanese if you have to and if you don't know the language. First and foremost, it helps a lot if you've already played these games before and you're really familiar with them. If you aren't familiar or if it's been a while, I highly recommend you play through these games in a language you understand first. Also, Japan uses the same numbers that most of the rest of the world uses, so you should be able to recognize the numbers. This is important for a couple of reasons. You can see the base power and accuracy of a move by looking at the numbers, and if you're familiar with the move types, you can also tell by the color what type the move is. This is actually more than enough information to figure out which moves to use, and those of you who know the game really well can even figure out exactly what move it is that you're using just with that information. Also, if you're really stuck and you just google the name of an item in the Pokemon games, Bulbapedia will show you the name of the item in Japanese and you can compare that to the text in your game. I will be the first person to tell you that it is not ideal to try to play a turn-based RPG in Japanese if you can't read the language. However, if you really want to get some of these Pokemon, it's definitely possible. Okay, so I didn't actually complete the Pokedex, but we came pretty damn close. This takes a lot of effort, and I know that not everyone is going to want to try this, but that's exactly why I wanted to make this video. I dumped a ton of hours into all these games as a kid, but I never even came close to completing the Pokedex. So I guess this is me finally closing this chapter of my life, experiencing the final few things in these games that I was unable to experience as a child. Well, probably not yet. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.